I know for you, spiritual economics has become a very, very important part of your work. Tell us a bit about spiritual economics. Why we well, should, why, why should we learn about it? Right. Well, spirit, when I, I talk about creating wealth, and spiritual economics is really about developing a prosperity consciousness. So there's lots of different titles to it, and um, I see wealth not just about money, wealth. In order to get all kinds of wealth in our lives, we're talking about financial, we're talking about um, personal, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about physical health, we're talking about intellectual health. So all of these are aspects of wealth that we want to get into our lives, yeah? But the spiritual economics, the, as I say, developing the prosperity consciousness is really the key to that. Yeah, it's really, and it has not only impact on the material wealth that we attract into our life, but in all, it has an impact in all the areas of our of the wealth that we want to bring into our life to create balance. And as I touched on last week, that our whole purpose in life really is to be happy and balanced. Yes. And this, you know, this is what we strive for. You know, this is what we strive for. So this is a really huge topic, and I'm aware that we have a very small amount of time. So what I've done is really put the main areas, if you like, the principles around um, an acronym, and it's an acronym around Marcus Garvey. Yes. Yes? So, you know, Marcus Garvey is one of my um, mentors, one of my teachers, obviously someone that I respect deeply and his words, and he spoke a lot about economics and about, you know, how we need to move forward, and that's one area that we want to address. Yeah. And... Um, you see, Garvey had a particular strategy, and that strategy worked for when Garvey was here in the 20s and 30s, but that strategy doesn't work now, necessarily. And one of the things that Dr. John Henry Clark spoke about is that, you know, a strategy is not a way of life, so we adopt different strategies relating to our situation. But when we're on point spiritually, when we connect with, you know, our universal mind, the greater universe, Yes. That's when we're on point. And I think, you see, what I, what I speak about and what I teach, I'm not really teaching anything new. You know, I'm just basically reminding people or reminding our people about where we came from. So you're yeah? saying this is part of our African spiritual um, system, our, um, part of our African value system? Most, most definitely. Yes. And, you know, as I said, these are the, you know, it's those having that knowledge that is within us. As I said, our God is within us. But that knowledge that is within us that we have forgotten was the, that our ancestors could connect to to build things like the pyramid, to build those great things, yes. to have that creativity. Yeah? So how would someone, for example, who's a, a Muslim or a, a Christian, um, you know, can they work with these laws? Because for some people, the they might Lord, think this is, yes. this is very unchristian or this is not in the Quran and I can't get with that kind of a program. No. The universe just operate regardless of what religion or what um, you know what belief system you have. Uh -huh. Yes, it just they just work it's like the law of gravity, the law of um, you know the law of magnetism. You know, if you have a magnet, it's going to attract certain things to it that has the same polarity, that has the same that's operating on the same frequency. Yes, what organized religion has done, unfortunately, is almost put a an intermediary between us and ourselves, us and our higher self, yes? So that yes. we have to negotiate through a third party to get to our higher self. Yes, yes. And the truth is that we don't really need an intermediary. We have that power within us. You know, again, I'm not a student of the Bible, but we know that we were made in the likeness of God. So God is therefore part of us, yes? We yes. are part of, the, you know, we are co-creators in our universe. And I understand that that might be difficult for people to grasp or to take on board initially, but as I said, we've got a very short space of time, so I'm not going to spend too much time going into that. And as I said, you know, don't accept anything that I say just because I say so. You can check it out for yourself. There's, you know, all the information is there.